discuss the Parker Police Department, which is a candidate for reaccreditation. The Parker Police Department has voluntarily contracted with the Commission to work towards reaccreditation and thereby continue to demonstrate its professional excellence. When the agency originally entered the process, it received the Commission's standards manual, which now contains 486 standards encompassing all facets of law enforcement management, operations, and support functions. The Commission last accredited this agency in 2013 after determining it had demonstrated compliance with all applicable standards. The agency's proofs of compliance are on file at the Parker Police Department. Since then, the agency has attempted to maintain those standards. Our responsibility as assessors is to revisit the agency and verify that it has remained in compliance since it was last accredited. Chief David King of the Parker Police Department has appointed Lieutenant Doreen Jokers as the accreditation manager to oversee the reaccreditation process for the agency. The lieutenant is assisted by Sheila Setzer. In accordance with the Commission's public information policy, the agency's candidacy for reaccreditation has been publicized in this area, and the agency has arranged for this public hearing. The public hearing is intended to provide interested citizens or employees of the agency an opportunity to address the assessment team concerning the agency. Any comments you make will be considered by us as we review the agency and will also re be reported back to the Commission. If you wish to supplement your verbal comments with a written statement or exhibits, you may present them to the team tonight or you may send them to the Commission where they will be reviewed when the agency is prevented, presented for reaccreditation at a formal Commission conference. I have an address here and an email address. If you'd like these afterwards, I'll be happy to give them to you if you'd like to send comments or uh, exhibits to the Commission. At the beginning of the meeting, a sign-in sheet was made available in the rear of the room. Those of you who indicated a desire to speak will be given an opportunity to address us in just a moment. We ask you to limit your comments to the topic of accreditation of the agency. If you wish to speak with any member of the Commission's staff, you may reach them at the Commission offices, and I can also provide you with a phone number for that if you wish. The Commission staff representative for this agency is Mark Moser. I would like to remind you the meeting is being recorded, and the recording will be made available to the Commission. Are there any, are there any questions before we begin? That said, we'll call the first speaker, Jim Boyd. My name is Jim Boyd, and I live here in Parker, and I'm here this evening as a citizen. My wife and I moved to Parker uh, in 2008 from a city of similar size in Central Texas. We wondered why Parker was called a town and not a city. Well, local historians can answer that question, but I think part of the distinction lies in the fact that Parker desires to be and present an image as a place with a hometown feel, a hometown atmosphere. Hometown feel, that sounded good to us. A place that was small, but not too small, friendly atmosphere, and safe. To maintain a hometown feel, the town would certainly need its police department to help protect and project that image. Soon after we arrived, I noticed that the department, in its public pronouncements, often mentioned that it's focused on building partnerships between the police and the community. Well, that sounded good, and I really liked it when I read the philosophy that the police department provides policing that is community-oriented. Wanting to know more about the department, I learned that it offered a Citizen Police Academy, and I signed up to participate. And what a fun, interesting experience that was. And graduates of the academy could apply to become citizen volunteers. Well, you could tell from what was presented at the academy and the manner in which it was presented that the department was eager to demonstrate its transparency with the public and let them see how it operates. I understand that the Citizen Police Academy fills up every time it's offered. Over the years that I've lived in Parker, I found many examples to illustrate that the department does strive to be a community-oriented police department. Here are a few examples, and there are many others. 
In addition to its popular Citizen Police Academy, the department offers a functional needs Citizen Police Academy for citizens who face special challenges. And there's a well-attended national night out held annually in O'Brien Park. And if you as a citizen would like to see what it's like to be on patrol behind the windshield of a police cruiser, you can sign up for the ride-along program. And if you'd like to visit with an officer in a more relaxed atmosphere, how about coffee with a cop? The final event for this year will take place next month at a local restaurant. And if you have prescription drugs you don't know what to do with, would you like to dispose of them safely? The department is there with a the national drug take-back event. If you're a member of an HOA, as I am, uh, the officers will come and talk to you about matters of interest to you. And if you need help setting up a neighborhood watch program, as we did, they'll do that too. In addition, the department offers lots of classes, such as emergency preparedness classes, community emergency response team, child safety classes, and others. And if you want more information about the department or would like to receive periodic alerts, these are available online. There's simply a lot of information out there. There is one more thing that I would like to comment on. And this illustrates, I think, how the department understands its responsibility to protect the constitutional rights of its citizens as well as respect citizens' privacy. On October 30th of this year, I read a piece in the Parker Chronicle, that's our local newspaper, with the following attention-getting headline. ACLU lauds police rollout of body cams. How many times have you seen a headline like that? I had never seen one before. The department had reached out to the ACLU and asked it to review its new policy guidelines for using body cameras and mobile video recordings. Well, the article quoted an ACLU spokesman as saying, and I'm quoting now, a well thought out approach to body worn cameras and accompanying policy make the Parker Police unique, as does the ACLU's glowing endorsement, end quote. The spokesman also said, and I'm quoted again, police agencies coast to coast are reviewing Parker's policy right now, end quote, as they explore the use of body-worn cameras. For a police department, it hardly gets any better than that. The department's policy on body cameras is posted online. If I were to be asked whether the Parker Police Department is successfully living up to its mission to be in partnership with the community and be a community-oriented police department, I would give a resounding yes. Thank you very much for your time and attention. Thank you, sir. Division Chief Jim Lorenz. Good evening. Tim Lorenz, I'm the division chief in charge of patrol operations at the Wheat Ridge Police Department. Wheat Ridge is a city pretty close to the size of Parker. We're on the west side of Denver. We got into accreditation just maybe a year before uh, Parker did. So we're both on our second cycles now. I served as accreditation manager at Wheat Ridge for the past two cycles. And uh, now I have found a new accreditation manager, which is Terrific. Uh, accreditation, as you know, is a very complicated and, and uh, difficult process for a lot of police departments. Um, I would say that Parker really did it right. They, they began coming to the RMAN, that's our uh, Rocky Mountain Accreditation Network, very early. And, um, they kind of figured out the process before they even started the process, so I was pretty impressed by the way they did that. Um, I just had nothing but good things to say about them. If, I, if I'm ever short of something that um, I want to promote in Wheat Ridge, I'll take a look at Parker's website. I'll take a look at their Facebook page, and uh, they always give us great ideas for, uh, for things to, the, to engage the community very engaging Facebook page, I would say. So, Anyway, we're here to support and, uh, and recommend them for reaccreditation and uh, appreciate your time. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. 
Jeff Streeter, Chief. Good evening. My name is Jeff Streeter. I'm the Chief of Police for the City of Lone Tree. Lone Tree is, if not the newest, one of the newest police departments in the state of Colorado in existence for the last 10 years. Shortly after the incorporation of the city and certainly with the startup of the new police department, they quickly recognized the need to collaborate and work closely with Parker Police Department. Since approximately 2006-2007, a number of IGAs and governmental agreements have been put into place through our partnerships and our collaboration with uh, the Parker Police Department. They handle our crime scene services, our evidence, our victim services, our crime analysis, and probably one of the bigger functions is certainly the day-to-day -day dispatch and communication operations that they handle for us. We're a smaller community of roughly 15,000 in population, 49 sworn officers, and through these partnerships and the standards in which Parker applies and maintains, it makes us a better organization. Uh, it, it requires us to work within those high standards. Um, again, we're a state accredited agency, but we have not seek national accreditation as of this time. I rely on Parker to give us a lot of guidance as a young department. Um, through their policies that they've established. It's not uncommon for me to call the chief or even one of the captains and even Lieutenant Joe Gerst have helped out in the past with some of the policies to, to clarify points for us as we grow as an agency. I can't speak enough about the partnership and certainly the respect that uh, all of law enforcement, I feel very comfortable in speaking for all of law enforcement. The standards in which they set, they maintain, and they're looked upon as, as a leader within this. So again, uh, echoing much of what Division Chief Lorenz said, we support them, and we're here in support of them tonight as a unified front, uh, recognizing what they have done and how they move forward, and asking for the reaccreditation, recommending that. Thank you for your time. Thank you, sir. Steve Budnick. Good evening. My name is Steve Budnack. I'm the volunteer chairman of the Parker Task Force, which is the local food bank here in Parker. Let me short and sweet with this. Um, the Parker Task Force cannot do what they do without the support of the Parker Police Department. They are extremely instrumental in supporting us by identifying families and individuals coming through our community that might be homeless or in need by bringing them to our attention so that we can work with them to get those families and individuals to a much better place. Not only that, our holiday programs that we have with our food bank you know that on the officer's day off, they will be at the food bank handing out Thanksgiving meals to families in need in our community. Along with that, on an annual basis, they host uh, Cram the Cruiser, which is collecting food and then donating to our food bank so that we can distribute it to kids in our schools that are going hungry. So the relationship is long and strong. Uh, we've been working together for quite some time. And uh, we cannot do, as I mentioned earlier, without the support of them. And I, I pray that the relationship will continue because they are extremely instrumental in operating our business. So thank you. Thank you, sir. Joe Roman. Good evening. I'm Jill Roman. I'm the non physician coroner for Douglas County. And before I start, I want to just say I highly recommend this fine group of professionals for accreditation. And I want to give you just a couple of instances in which I was involved with them, or my staff has been involved with them. They've been involved quite a bit with them, but I just want to point out a few. And these by no means are a hallmark or a cornerstone to how they treat other professionals of other organizations. As you know, the coroner's office is an independent agency. We co-investigate side by side with law enforcement. Not in that we work totally together, we have separate jobs to do. Investigators on the coroner's side of things are medical investigators, or they're criminal investigators, yet the investigations often coincide. I want to highly commend Sergeant Chris Bryant. I had the opportunity, a family called me suggesting that their father committed suicide in a clandestine manner said that there was a substance, a powdery substance, that they felt might have contributed to his death. The family called me because I had worked with them a little bit over the death. And when I called Sergeant Chris Bryant to explain this to him, he was extraordinarily receptive, very involved, and got right to task with dealing with the family. 
on what could be a controversial issue, assisted suicide. It was great working with him. He was calm, he was polite, he was diplomatic, and most important to me, he respected our office. I've had an opportunity to work with Detective Bev Wilson, also on an overdose case. We've had plenty of other cases, but Bev stood out as somebody, or Detective Wilson stood out as somebody who um, was a lifelong, committed, dedicated servant to the public and really didn't understand the medical issue behind it and was very willing to go first to the coroner's office to ask our medical expertise, despite the fact she could have circumvented, go to, gone to outside physicians. She chose not to do that. She chose to honor our office. And I'm very grateful for that type of honoring of our office. Because in my position, as a non-physician elected coroner, it can happen that they will sign medical agreements and go outside the sphere of the medical examiner coroner to get their information. This office doesn't seem to be doing that. And I, I'm very proud that they don't do that. Another instance is that oftentimes jurisdictions will come to my office to be part and to view and to um, uh, pinpoint issues related to autopsies, positively so. Parker Police Department has such a high respect for Douglas County Coroner's Office that they don't come to every single autopsy. They know, in fact, that we do know what we're doing. Not that other departments, by doing that, suggest that we don't know what we're doing. They do, but the fact of the matter is, it gives great pride for them to say, no, we don't think we need to be there. In other words, you've got it, coroner and your staff. You'll let us know if we need something else. I find that highly commendable. I've worked with their dispatch, always friendly. I've been stranded, I'm new to this county, and I've been stranded. Dispatch is friendly. They never waver in trying to treat us right, no matter what we're trying to do for their staff, our staff, our citizens, our county. With highest recommendation, I suggest to you that you credit this office. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Jim Pushai. Good evening. My name is Jim Pushan. I'm the Division Chief for the Compliance Professional Standards Division with the Aurora Police Department. Aurora is a city uh, just north of Parker. We share a little bit of uh, Douglas County, so we're in the same county as Parker and at times. We're in the same judicial district as Parker. And we've always had a great working relationship with the Parker Police Department. We'll work together on cases. We've had some motor vehicle theft recoveries, some other incidents, and especially up and down Parker Road. Uh, we've had times where we'll interview the witnesses and they'll interview the suspects or the victims. We'll share the information and the appropriate agency will file uh, the, the, the charges as, as necessary. Um, we work closely with them with Rocky Mountain Accreditation Network. They share information with us. Uh, we recently were lucky to host a meeting of 18th Judicial District Chiefs. Chief King came to that. He shared all the information on the body camera uh, directive that they wrote, as you heard the first speaker talk about. Not only did he brief us on it, he actually emailed a copy of the directive to everybody there that wanted it, and, and we've taken that under uh, our use, and we're looking at that as we develop and change our policy. We can't say enough about the City of Parker and the Parker Police Department. Although it's really outside the, the three-year term for this reaccreditation, when we really needed help, when we had our theater shooting, Parker helped. We had victims show up at the, at the hospital here and Parker took care of those victims and that's extremely important to us. Uh, on behalf of Chief Metz, our chief, we highly recommend reaccreditation for the city of Parker Police. And I have a letter that we've sent to the commission that I'd like to share and leave with you if that's okay. Thank you, sir. Good evening, my name is Jeff Hoffman. I'm Gary Hayes. Good evening. I'm uh, here in a couple different roles. The first role is uh, as vice president, um, I'm sorry, as immediate past president of the Rocky Mountain Accreditation Network. It's a, uh, covers the whole Rocky Mountain region. We have about 36 police departments that are members of it. Um, 
we end up uh, networking and meeting about once a quarter. Uh, also, when a CALEA conference is not being held in our region, we hold our own uh, training conference. Um, Parker Police Department has been very involved in that. When they first decided to go upon this accreditation, um, they reached out to the Rocky Mountain Accreditation Network. They got so involved that uh, during Doug Hurst, Jokers was the vice president at one point in time, and currently she was Setzer. Um, you obviously have met her and dealt with her over the past couple of days. She's the secretary treasurer of the uh, Rocky Mountain Accreditation Network. They've assist assisted us and other agencies with training, and uh, as you heard from other speakers, they uh, have an academy that they uh, hold for their citizens. Um, this whole accreditation thing, I believe, is Parker has been around for years. Um, I have personally known some of their uh, officers for about 29 years now. Um, they have always been a professional organization, and as they've gone along, they've lived like they were accredited, but they weren't. And so now, uh, a few years ago, they decided to reach out and say, hey, we think we're a professional organization, but do we meet those national standards? And that is what accreditation is about. Making sure you meet those national standards and do you cut it. And they certainly have long before they ever, ever reached out for accreditation. Um, I certainly hope that you will consider them for uh, reaccreditation this time. Um, I was one of their mock assessors uh, on these files and also the time before. Um, so. I see in the front end of it as an officer working with them and then also actually looking in their files. Um, so I certainly hope you will recommend them for reaccreditation. And uh, they're a great organization. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Bob Baker. I'm the fire chief for South Metro Fire Rescue Authority, and uh, South Metro also serves the community of Parker. It's my heartfelt honor and privilege to be here uh, to uh, support Parker's reaccreditation through CALEA. Uh, about 10 years ago, I served as our accreditation manager for the uh, Parker Fire Protection District. Uh, it was the longest, maybe eight months of my life. Uh, Doreen deserves a raise. And, um, and I know it's a very difficult process, and, and I really wasn't familiar with, um, with the CALEA standards, so I spent some time, um, I'm sleep deprived, so this might go a little long. Uh, I spent some time looking at the standards, almost 500 performance standards, and I tried to pick out a few that I thought were relevant as, as far as the fire department's uh, relationship with the, with the Parker Police Department. And I've been in the community in Parker for about 34 years, so it provides me a unique opportunity to speak to uh, what I would think would be one of the most important standards that, that is probably also uh, one of the most difficult to measure. And that's at the beginning of the CALEA standards that talks about a code of ethics. I printed off the Parker Police Department's Law Enforcement Code of Ethics. And I think uh, Chief King would probably agree with me whether it's fire or police, really the foundation of public service, whether it police or fire, uh, is really the men and women in blue that serve the community. And, and without a really strong ethical foundation, moral foundation there, um, it won't matter, matter how good your training is, it won't matter how good your equipment is, how good your SOGs are, uh, you're not going to do a good job. And what I've seen in 34 years, and, uh, and probably know a great deal of the Parker Police Force, is that uh, to a man and woman, they, uh, they meet this law enforcement code of ethics. It's not just writing uh, on, a, on a wall. It uh, talks about maintaining courageous calm in the face of danger. It talks about being constantly mindful of the welfare of others, honest in thought and deed in both uh, personal and official life. I've seen that on calls uh, week after week out in the field, and for 34 years uh, they've established a tradition of integrity in the Parker Police Force. So I know that Chief King is uh, certainly very proud of his men and women, and uh, from the fire department's perspective, I'm proud of them as well. The three areas that I thought I'd, I'd briefly talk about besides the Code of Ethics are communications, training, career development, and competence. 
Uh, with regard to communications, the fire department and the police department enjoy a CAD to CAD interface. We both have TriTech CAD. Uh, I would think, as far as accreditation goes, uh, that's a very important uh, um, uh, piece of equipment. It allows for incident exchange and notes pass through in real time. Uh, and it certainly facilitates the safety of our men and women in the field and also the ability for us to coordinate with law enforcement. When I talked with our, our men and women in METCOM, that's the folks that dispatch for the fire department, I asked them this morning about their relationship with the dispatchers at the Parker Police Department and also with the law enforcement officers either over the radio or by phone when we respond together in, uh, in an interoperable way. And they had nothing but positive things to say about how they interact with Parker PD. On to training and career development. Uh, one of the things, talk about a couple of things here. Uh, one of the things that we've enjoyed is, uh, is a, uh, a collaboration with the town of Parker, the police department, uh, with regard to a driver's training course. So we train our firefighters on driving fire apparatus. The police department trains its officers on driving police equipment, uh, code three. Uh, or emergent, and uh, we also use that driver's training course to train our teens and to keep them safe when they're when they're on the road, just out, just uh, in high school and, and for the first time driving. A couple of things: uh, tra training and career development are only good when they're put into practice and, and they work. And so I I, I have a couple of, of items of note that I think are important. So in October. The, the Parker Police Department spearheaded a training we were involved with with the fire department and an active shooter drill at Rocky Vista University. That was October of 2014. And then unfortunately, in May of 2015, Park, the Parker Police sought a suspect who shot at a Rocky, or Rocky Vista University guard. Uh, that's training, and, that's foresight in training and then putting training into action out in the streets. And then from a uh, Parker Police Department Facebook page uh, this afternoon, uh, civilian training. South Metro Fire Rescue Authority is teaching fire safety to our Access and Functionally Needs Academy students tonight. Thank you, South Metro. It's another example of collaboration between fire and, and police. And then lastly, I'll just talk for a second about competence. Training put into practice is what's critical. So in 2014, a Parker police officer, Joe Cummings, uh, saved another, uh, or saved a citizen's life with CPR. And then just a year later, uh, I had the opportunity to write a letter to Chief King uh, on a 2015 save of, of, sim of similarity. I'm just going to read it quickly. Dear Chief King, on behalf of the South Metro Fire Rescue Authority, I'd like to take this opportunity to thank Sergeant Nate Shabinsky, Officer Trey Biles, and Officer Darcy Heyer for their quick action once arriving on scene of an 83-year-old who was on the ground receiving CPR near Parker Road and Main Street on October 24th. When our crews arrived on scene, they found your officers performing CPR after shocking the patient upon receiving instruction to do so on the third AED analysis. En route to the hospital, our crews had to shock the patient a second time, which resulted in the return of spontaneous breathing and pulses. Upon arrival at Parker Adventist Hospital, the patient was conscious and able to speak to the hospital staff and answer questions. The quick professional actions of your personnel were directly responsible for the patient's positive outcome and for what I am sure the patient's daughter and grandson are truly grateful for what they are truly grateful. This is another excellent example of our departments working together as first responders. Um, that's just one example of many dozens of examples, even over just the past couple of years. Uh, so it, it is, like I said before, my honor and privilege to support the Parker Police Department in the reaccreditation. Uh, I'm, I'm honored to work with them and alongside them. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Steve Brown. Hi, my name is Steve Brown. I'm pleased to speak to you uh, this evening. Uh, as a citizen of Parker, we moved here about 28 years ago and uh, raised our family. I'm also a lawyer in the community office on Main Street. I'll speak to you as a professional in my view of uh, the Parker Police Department. The, the words that uh, ring most true to me about the Parker Police Department are community partnership. And I believe uh, as I was walking across the street from my office one morning uh, to get a cup of coffee from our local coffee shop and there were a number of police officers in there with these nicely designed black coffee mugs 
and it was have a cup of coffee with a police officer, and they were handing out these mugs and making themselves known to the community. And I thought, wow, that's a great idea. And that was about two years ago. And so I got my black coffee cup, and as I've noticed, um, the benefit of the doubt when there's uh, force used in the community by a police officer is now no longer with police officers, but there's uh, it's now that the citizens are uh, not real pleased across the country with how police officers are behaving, it appears. But I don't think that that's going to happen as readily in Parker when use of force is used because we know our police officers. We see them on Main Street. We have coffee with them. And when you know a person, you're going to give them the benefit of the doubt when the newspapers come out with some type of incident. And I think that is invaluable, and that was far-sighted. Uh, for Chief King and the rest of them to, to, uh, to do that and get to know us. Um, as a professional, I think I would also, I don't practice criminal law, but I think I would have an ear attuned to if there was uh, a, uh, a feeling in the legal community that the police department was overreaching, um, and I don't see that or hear that at all. So that's a very positive for our police department and our community. And then finally, I, I hope it doesn't affect the accreditation. But that coffee cup that I got, I served coffee to a client, and he really liked it, so I gave it to him. I have been promised a replacement coffee cup for some time. <laughs> I have not yet received it. Hope to, and I think I will. Uh, I think you can finish that. Another thought was it? Uh, anyway, it's been a pleasure to uh, to raise a family here, have a law practice here, and, and have the Parker Police Department be uh, part of our community. So I would recommend accreditation. Oh, I know what it was. You can have all the accreditation that you would like, but if your community doesn't like you, they think you're arrogant, uh, then that's not going to go very far. And our community likes our police department. Our community does not see arrogance, we see humility. While being friendly, they balance that with professionalism. So I couldn't speak more highly of our police department. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Sheriff Dave Walter. Good evening. If you don't get that coffee cup, I would be happy to give you one from the Arapahoe County Sheriff's Office. <laughs> I'm Dave Walter. I'm the Arapahoe County Sheriff. If you go two miles north of here, you hit the Arapahoe County, Douglas County line. Arapahoe County is a population of about 650,000 people, and we share a common border with the Parker Police Department. I've been in law enforcement in the Denver metropolitan area for 35 years, and without fail, I will, I've watched them grow, and without fail, I can tell you, that has and it been involved with CLIA for about 25 years, either from an organizational standpoint or an assessor, or now we are getting our ninth reaccreditation in Miami, I hope. So I'm very familiar with that. But I have the utmost respect for the Parker Police Department. And having not reviewed the files, um, I can't make comment about whether they comp are compliant or not. I highly uh, doubt there's any issues re relative to them being non compliant, so I absolutely support them. And I have to mention a couple of things. It's an incredible organization. This, and in this area, we are blessed with many, many accredited law enforcement agencies. And we are also blessed with agencies that work very well together. Because the reality is, and you've heard from some people in this room, when big things happen, it takes everyone. And the Parker Police Department is always there when we've had major incidents in Arapahoe County, or in Aurora, as Chief Bouchon said, but they're always there to help, and I have a high level of respect for them. And I wish Mr. Boyd was here, our first speaker. I don't think he is. But, oh, thank you. Um, I want you to hear this. The town of Parker was incorporated in 1981, and in 1981, their census was 290 people. 290 people, and now we're talking about a city of, I believe, about 50,000 people. And, and in my opinion, living very close to here, just in Arapahoe County, but watching them grow as a community, what used to be a very small town, Little Burg, they've managed to grow up to a, a town of now 50,000 people. Their police department has grown. And what's amazing is, it is one of the most professional organizations, police organizations in this area in the state of Colorado. But I don't think they've lost that sense of community that you talked about. 
and I and I think that's amazing for to to run a place from 290 to 50,000 people in 35 years, and still have that. So I, I highly commend that. And lastly, and one more comment, you've heard it several times, but I want to also mention from my point of view, their policy on body worn cameras did see, get the endorsement of the ACLU, and in fact, Chief Streeter and I are on a statewide study group that's been formulated to examine policies related to body-worn cameras. And our goal, or our mission by statute out of the study group is to come up with what will be recommended best practices and policies related to the deployment of body-worn cameras for the state of Colorado. And we're certainly looking at that policy as part of our study group uh, because it did uh, have that endorsement from the ACLU. Although maybe I don't agree with everything in that policy, and I. It's, that's irregardless here, but the bottom line is that they've developed this policy, it does have that, and we we need to take a serious look at that and see if it does fit for, for the mission of our group. So, and there's a lot of great things happening in Parker. The bottom line is I highly support them. It's a great organization, and they're great working partners, and we work with them uh, almost every day, so I highly support their reaccreditation. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Corey Nelson. Good evening, thank you for being here. Um, I had the pleasure of talking to you as a resident of the town of Parker with a little bit of experience and background in the field of law enforcement. For 25 years, I've been a municipal prosecutor for the city and county of Denver, handling criminal cases up in Denver. I have the pleasure of living here, raising my family and my child here. Um, and I have to, I've got, the more I've gotten to know this department, the, the more impressed I've been. I moved here in 2007 from Highlands Ranch an uh, unincorporated community just to the west of here, one of the largest in the area. And from that experience, I've got a chance to work with the Douglas County Sheriff's Office. I've done some volunteer work for, uh, for them at the countywide level and done some work with them. In my experiences, I have a tendency to talk to a lot of the officers and the folks, and I've asked a lot of questions like, you know, how are the relationships going? How, are, how is, you know, Parker coordinating with the Sheriff's Department, and how are they working? And every time I get a chance to talk and ask those kind of questions, I get the same answer, that, that they're fantastic to work with a good team member and, and a great department. Um, I've had a chance to take a look. Um, I just recently completed an eight-week Civic Academy class that the town of Parker puts on. And every week, we learn about another department. One night, they did a presentation for our academy class from the police department. We got to learn some more details about them and learn some details. Um, I do, do want to talk briefly about the body camera policy because in my world, uh, the Fourth Amendment is one of the field areas that I work highly, highly in as far as technology and the Fourth Amendment is my field of expertise. Uh, I also uh, volunteer with the International Municipal Lawyers Association and work a group, with a group there that deal with uh, municipal attorneys and technology. And so we have a Yahoo group that we discuss these issues. For years and years, we've been seeing body cameras coming up, up, up and up. And, are more prevalent and more needed. And this has been an issue as far as how to deal with these balancing issues of, of, these, of these policies. It's a very tough issue. We've been wrangling with that for years, looking at how are we going to do that. The town of Parker, you know, like reaching out to the ACLU is just amazing. I mean, how many agencies do you have to reach out to them and say, here, why don't you take a look at it? Not only get their accommodation and recommendation from that. Uh, about the same time Parker came out with theirs, the International Solar Station came out with, with their recommendation for a, for a, a policy. Uh, well, I have to say, I shared partners with this conversation group that I have on technology, and, and they were blown away. They were really impressed that uh, a, a small town police department can come up with that. So I don't think that Parker is meeting these standards you have. I think they're exceeding them. I think they're leading the way. I think they're a national leader when it comes to these most very important issues. I remember before we come to this theory academy class, when I heard Parker was going to body cameras, I can't scratch my head because I said, really? We have a problem here that we need to document these kinds of interactions and, and document what's happening? I didn't think we had that kind of problem. I didn't think Parker really needed body cameras. Well, then I got to realize and talk to the chief about why they have those body cameras. It's not because there's a problem here. It's because they're trying to prevent problems and trying to look out for their officers and saying, if they have somebody coming in here causing a problem and all of a sudden they're making false accusations, they want those cameras to back up those officers. Because I've always told <coughs> officers, you should welcome cameras if you're a professional. 
Because if you're a professional, you're doing things the right way, then those cameras are not going to do it, but just document and prove that's exactly the type of well that you do. And so, having seen body cameras in action, up in Denver, they did a, a test project for them, and I got to see the video camera shots and see how those work. The fact that Town of Parker would take the leadership role, I think, you know, in, in the nation coming up with this policy and working towards that and working with people in the public speaks highly for them. So I just want you to know, folks, from the citizen's perspective, we do like our police officers. We do know them. They get out of their police cars, and they stop in our cul-de-sac, and they talk to my child, and they talk to my neighbor's children, and they get to know them, and they get to understand them and relate to them. So they're just not cops just driving by. They're interacting. They're part of our community. And so I appreciate the fact that I, I think that they do deserve this reaccreditation. Thank you, sir. I'm going to apologize up front on this one. Uh, George, I can't read your last name, but I believe you're the district attorney. <laughs> That's all right. Uh, it's uh, George Brockler. I'm going to go mobile. <laughs> um, when we dim the lights, I've got a little musical thing I'd like to do for Dave and the boys. No, I'm kidding. Uh, my name is George Brocker. I'm the district attorney for the 18th Judicial District. And that's where we're sitting right now. And I don't know how familiar you are with the way Colorado di divides up its prosecutorial power, but we have 22 judicial districts. The 18th is by far the most populous one. When I come to talk to you today about this, it's not just as the DA, though. I, uh, I consume what they do in the courtroom, no doubt. But I also live here with my family. I'm married and I have four small kids. So Parker Police Department matters to me. The quality of this police department matters to me more than just the DA. This 18th Judicial District has in total about 962,000 people. The state demographer tells us by 2017 it will be up over a million, which makes us one of the top 34 largest jurisdictions in the country. It has 23 different police agencies. Parker is one of them. And if the other guys weren't here, I'd tell you they were the best one. But they are here, so I will tell you they are among some of the best. Um, this, this town has grown, and, and Sheriff Walter talked about this, in such an incredible way, along with the entire county. Douglas County's been one of the fastest growing counties in the country for 10, 15 years. Parker itself, 20 years ago, was 20% of the population that it is today. 15 years ago, it was half as big as it is today and it continues to get bigger. If you talk to the town council here, they have plans and there are developments going in they are going to see Parker over the next 10, 20 years probably once again get close to doubling again in size. So this police department has done more than to manage what it was given. It has had to grow with that exploding, burgeoning population and it has done so, in my opinion, largely seamlessly. Now, I'm also not just the district attorney sitting on top of 80 prosecutors and 23 agencies, and I just hear things. I've also worked with their uh, police officers and detectives in the courtroom. Before there was the Aurora Theater shooting case that I tried this year, I was in court down in Douglas County trying a case of a guy named C.J. Galley. C.J. Galley was a guy who, um, in an attempt to try to take him down in a drive through of a Taco Bell in Castle Rock, that's its own after action report, by the way. That was not these guys, that was a, an organization up north. It got out of control. CJ Galley breaks away, knocks over a police officer, hurting him to the point of ending his career. Gunshots are fired, and now there's a 23 ish mile chase from Castle Rock through Parker. Parker police are nearly killed. They deploy uh, men and women, stop sticks, AR 15s. And ultimately, this guy is taken into custody without any loss of life. Now, as a result of the joint operations of Castle Rock PD and Parker PD, this case was filed. It was vigorously defended. We went to trial for, my goodness, two and a half weeks. And at the end of the day, the jury convicted on every single count. And that guy got sent to prison for over 160 years. I sat next to Bev Wilson. Uh, one of the detectives from Parker, for those two and a half weeks, and I can tell you that the product that they put together on even the biggest, most difficult cases is top-notch. And it's the kind of thing that even the district attorney can come into court and get in front of a jury and convince them beyond a reasonable doubt that someone needs to be held accountable for their conduct. 
Um, in the course of the few years that I have uh, been in this term, we file about 4,000 felony cases a year. The bulk of those come from Arapahoe County, and Jim, no offense if you're still here, most of those come out of Aurora. Um, but Parker PD has done a great job of not only addressing the issues before they become bigger issues, but when the, whether it's a misdemeanor or a felony filing, they figure out a way to put together a great product and get it to our office. And this is the part that I appreciate about all of these men and women back here. We have the kind of relationship where my folks can say to their folks, this isn't good enough. You need to go back and get more. And there's no bruised feelings, there's no ego involved. People go and get the job done. And conversely, they can come to our people and say, you didn't seem prepared on that case. What's going on? Why are you giving this plea bargain on this case? This case matters to me. That's the kind of relationship I think we've developed throughout the 18th Judicial District, but, but Parker's a great example of that. Um, this is one of the great police departments out there. Um, it's going to continue to grow. It's going to continue to succeed under the leadership that it has. And I wasn't promised a mug. I was promised my own cruiser. <laughs> I really wasn't. I'm joking. Um, I say accredit them again, re-accredit them. Great department. Thank you for the opportunity to talk with you. Sure. Well, thank you very much. John Garabaglio. Good evening, gentlemen, and welcome to Colorado. Thank you. The uh, weather is courtesy of the uh, Town of Parker administration, in spite of what Chief Keene might have uh, might have told you. Uh, uh, I'm retired from Arvada, uh, Colorado, a northwest suburb. I was the accreditation manager there, and I spent the last part of my career with Golden. I retired a year ago from them, and I was the accreditation manager there. I'm also a team leader and an assessor. Uh, I was very, very uh, honored by Chief King right after he took office to uh, have a series of meetings and telephone conversation with him about what I thought they might be able to do uh, with this process. And uh, I, I'm, I'm very pleased to say that I was involved in, uh, I, I will call it the early, early sort of coaching and guidance as they started to embrace this thing. And, I've been around me way longer in, with this whole process in this state, longer than I want you to be doing the math over, but it's, it's been a long bang time. And I've worked with a lot of startup places and a lot of places that were trying to re-engineer themselves as far as the accreditation process goes. And uh, with all of that, uh, within the nine states that the RMAN group covers, because I've done that for other folks in other states too, there are two agencies that stand out uh, who actually listened, paid attention, got with the program, and made it happen. And they're both in this county. And Parker is one of those two agencies. I could not be more happy for the success that they've enjoyed with this program. Uh, I was intricately involved in their first uh, cycle, not so much on this cycle because I was in patrol and I was trying to I get myself out the door before they uh, asked me to go. Yeah. But at any rate, uh, I heartily endorse this agency. I think they do wonderful things. Uh, I've known most of their staff for a long, long time, and this is a quality organization with quality people, and I'm confident that you will find nothing of critical substance in their files, and I did not look at them this time, so. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Chris Collin. Good evening. My name is Chris Colleen. Um, I'm a retired police officer with Golden. Uh, I had the privilege of working as their accreditation manager towards the end of my career there. Um, I came down today, one, to support their reaccred uh, as a retired PAC mem member. Um, also have several family members and, uh, fam and friends who live in this area. This is probably the one place I would consider moving to. Um, if I ever had to move away from Golden, uh, for their community and what they have in this community to offer. The police department, has, I've never heard anything bad about this police department. 
Um, I think you've obviously seen that through their files and through the last couple of days of working with them. Uh, definitely would recommend the refit. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Steve Johnson. Good evening, I'm Steve Johnson. I'm a uh, Bureau Chief with the Douglas County Sheriff's Office. Uh, our agency just went through uh, reaccreditation and, and hopefully uh, we'll obtain that in uh, Miami uh, in the next week. Um, before I get started, I wanted to uh, apologize to both of you for my uh, scruffy appearance. As you may know or you may not know, it's No Shave November and those people that uh, you know lose hair um, during cancer, you know, we're uh, as an agency doing a fundraiser for them. So, and unlike Chief Streeter, I have the ability to grow hair, as you can see uh, from there. So, I just wanted to uh, point that out. Um, on a very, very serious note, um, with regards to the reaccreditation for the Parker Police Department, uh, I have been very fortunate to have the professional relationship with Chief King for over 35 years. Uh, in our law enforcement careers and the members of his command staff for close to 30 years. So I feel uh, very confident in standing here for Sheriff Spurlock uh, to talk about the Parker Police Department and our relationship with them. Uh, the Douglas County uh, Sheriff's Office, we represent the 844 square miles which include the city of Parker and uh, we have enjoyed a very, very positive relationship with the Parker Police Department um, and the members of that agency. And as you've heard, and um, I feel compelled to also mention to you, um, in those times of need and in those times of collaboration, um, that exists with the Parker Police Department. They always step up. Uh, I have um, four examples that I want to give to you to talk to you about. Uh, here in uh, Douglas County, we share what's known as the impact team. And it is a regionalized effort from law enforcement and the district attorney's office here in Douglas County to address crime, um, specifically through the use of investigators, district attorneys, um, to impact crime as it occurs out here in Douglas County. Uh, the Parker Police Department is a great partner with that and they share in the collaboration, they share in the policies and procedures and the SOP and the MOU and everything that we need to have um, that impact unit be very, very successful and they are very successful and uh, the great partnership that exists uh, contributes to that. Uh, the men and women of the Parker Police Department step up whether the crime is actually that the impact unit's looking at is actually here, or it's in one of the other jurisdictions, they're there and they're a great partnership. Uh, Chief King and members of his command staff um, participate in the board of directors. They give input. Uh, they're very collaborative individuals for the impact team. And uh, I would say that that model is very successful here in Douglas County. Um, secondly, in Douglas County, we participate and we operate through, uh, which you may have seen in your file review, uh, a regional SWAT concept. And the Parker Police Department are great partners in that. Uh, their members are, are nothing but consummate professionals on that team. Uh, we rely heavily, heavily um, on the members of those teams uh, from the Parker Police Department for our regional SWAT team. Jim Bernadoni is our lead sniper uh, for that. He's a team leader. Uh, he steps up and uh, again, uh, no matter where it occurs, we feel like we can depend on the Parker Police Department uh, among the other law enforcement agencies out here uh, to be a good partner. And that has been very, very successful for us for the regional SWAT team and a, a good operating model for us. I wanted to give you an example of uh, this past summer, we had a uh, armed suicidal subject call that was in the unincorporated portion of Douglas County and primarily our responsibility, but it was about a half block away from the city limits of the Parker Police Department. And as you put it as an example, 
uh, the Parker Police Department stepped up that night with resources, helped us with this armed suicidal subject who was holding a gun to his head in his garage and threatening to commit suicide. The Parker Police Department, without hesitation, stepped up on that call, uh, assisted us, and everything clicked. Everything came together and it led to a successful resolution and we were able to get this individual into custody without harm to himself, without harm to others, and without officers taking any enforcement action other than tasing this individual, getting him into custody, and having him to face the criminal charges that he needed to face and the M1 hold from there. So again, the Parker Police Department, a very, very professional organization, uh, has that ability to know when they're needed, to step up and work with their partnering agencies without hesitation uh, from there. Uh, lastly, just as an example today, the Parker Police Department's ability to just work well with others, um, and this is just one of many examples, uh, they released a bulletin on a theft that occurred, and this went out to everyone. And, you know, I know their abilities in social media, they're great, but also that inside within law enforcement organizations, the ability to get information out on criminals and what criminals are doing and to help us solve crime, uh, they are just absolutely top shelf in their approach to that and today was just another example of that with this theft bulletin that they put out. Um, I have lived in Douglas County for 30 years and again too uh, I've had the opportunity to watch. I live right outside of uh, Parker and I've had the opportunity to watch um, the growth and the smart growth uh, that in the law enforcement arena, uh, Chief King and uh, the members of the Parker Police Department have taken, and um, their reaccreditation speaks towards the direction um, that they see the agency going and their compliance with all of the standards and everything that they're doing. And uh, I, like everyone else, would highly recommend that the uh, Parker Police Department um, be reaccredited. So thank you very much. Thank you, sir. David Weaver. Well, good evening and thanks for being here. My name is David Weaver and uh, currently I'm a county commissioner. Prior to that, I was in law enforcement for 34 and a half years and served eight years as the Douglas County Sheriff. And probably to date myself, when Sheriff Walter said about 290 folks that were here in Parker in 1981, I remember being a young officer working a little blinking light in the middle of Main Street, and about 268 people voted, and here we sit in the lovely town of Parker. I also call this my home. It's hard, I think I'm probably pretty close to the end here as far as speaking, but when you look at one extreme of 1980, 1981, where Parker was pretty much a small little town, Hills and Market, not much being around here, population, like I say, about 268 folks. And you look at the population we have here today of 50,000, and you look at the overall county at 314,000, and that's going to hit about 450 here in the next 20 years. Parker has grown and will continue to grow, and I think it says a lot about why is and why are they going through accreditation. It's about the people. It's about assuring our citizens that we have the best police officers out there, the best trained, the best on the force, the best in the metro area. And the collaboration that you have between all these law enforcement agencies is remarkable. I've been around a long time and seeing them in action if it's the Columbine shooting, wherever horrific things have happened here in the Metro Denver area. Watching the uh, faces out here, many friends and colleagues being out there, all those scenes. It's about that unity in police work. I know in their hearts that they want to do the best things for their community. And I think that's why people are moving to Douglas County. That's why they're choosing Parker to be their home, or Lone Tree, or Highlands Ranch, or Arapahoe County. This is a great place to be because it's the leadership of these exceptional officers that we have and the leadership we have, such as Dave King, that are doing great things in our areas. It's uh, inspirational to me that as I left law enforcement, I know that my family is in good hands. I'm one of those guys now that has to call 911 now if I need a police officer. 
but I know the hands that I'm in. I feel good when my wife's home, my grandkids are home. I know the people that are going to ride right there and make a difference. So I applaud them for going for accreditation to start with years ago, and but for reaccredit this time. If there's no agency that's out there that's perfect, there's none because we've all been in this business long enough to know there's something that's going to happen. But it's the way that they deal with the crisis. I know they're going to come through it great. So thank you once again for being here, and I applaud the men and women in the Park Police Department. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I have no other speakers on the list. Is there anyone else in the room that would like to address us tonight? That will pretty much conclude our public hearing then, but I do once again want to remind you I have up here the address for the commission as well as an email address and phone number if you need that. Thank you very much for attending tonight.